What's going on everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here at the full review for you of the latest flagship from HTC. It's the third iteration of their M line. This is the M9. As I do with all my reviews, let me start with a disclaimer. This is an international unit that I tested with AT&T. I used it for four and a half days before filming this review. I like to evaluate all the phones I check out based on whether or not I could use them for 18 to 24 months. Since most of you like to keep your phones for around that period of time. So anything I talk about bears that in mind. Also, we've got a ton more stuff, including galleries, uh, in our full written review. Hit the link down below if you want to go check that out. So I'm going to break this review down into two simple categories. What I like and what I don't like, and give a score and a buy, don't buy recommendation at the end of the review. So I'm in a good mood. Let's go ahead and just start with the positives. Let's begin with internals. This thing is a beast in the spec department. Well, for the most part, but we'll get to that. The Snapdragon 810 is super fast and 3 gigabytes of RAM makes sure everything runs really smoothly. We didn't initially have the shipping software on the device, we had an older version, but once that hit, things absolutely flew. And not fast like I'm used to, things somehow seem smooth here. Also, speaking of software, a lot of commotion was made regarding heat. Uh, once we got the shipping build, this got no hotter than any other device, uh, and in fact, it ran cooler than a OnePlus One we used for testing. So don't really worry about that. Uh, that was done on pre-production software. So I tend to focus more on user experience, but because I know you guys love them benchmarks, here you go. The Quadrant score is 28,837, and the Intuitu using the 5.6.264-bit test was 48,795, so pretty good all around. Pretty good scores. So next up is expandable storage, which is quickly becoming just a relic in the phone world. I would have liked to have more than 32 gigs on board internally, but being able to swap in a car up to 128 gigs makes this not only a great feature, but also, oddly now, a differentiating factor amongst the big flagships. Not surprisingly, for HTC, build quality is pretty awesome here, as it always tends to be. The phone feels solid, looks solid, and is built to be solid. Uh, just plain and simple. Uh, I also like the two-color tone around the edges. It's a subtle but really nice touch. I still don't like the antenna bars in the back, though, as I sort of rammed against these uh, on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, but they're here, so love or hate them, that's where they live. Boom sound is still the best speakers you can get on a phone, and this incarnation sounds awesome, loud, and less tinny than really anything else out there. They do come with a bit of sacrifice, though, in the design department, uh, the form of black bars, but we're going to talk about them in the next section, so spoiler alert! Sent 7 could probably fall into both categories here, but I'm up again with the positives. Uh, the ability to create and download and share your own themes is far from novel or even original in Android, uh, but HTC's built-in, no additional launcher-needed approach is really elegant. Uh, I like the array of downloadable choices and the ability to create your own uh, based on a picture is kind of a neat touch as well. I was rocking a Lucy theme here for most of my testing. The rest of Sense Editions, I really don't use to be honest. The Sense Now widget that adjusts itself based to where you are, based on work, home, or etc. was nice, but I'd rather have that space available for other info. Uh, the big thing about Sense for me boils down to this. It doesn't detract from the overall experience, which is way more than I can say for some of the others out there. I don't find myself struggling to download apps that make it look like stock Android or scour the internet for custom ROMs. Uh, so that's about the best thing I can say about custom UIs. Blink feed is good here, but in this iteration, I quickly found myself going back to Google Now instead. Uh, but I suppose that's the beauty of Android, right? You get choice based on whatever you want. All right, so now let's go to the other side of the coin. What I don't like. HTC's design used to be what made the company stand out. In a sea of flimsy plastic, the M7 and M8 stood high above the rest in their metal towers. This generation, though, they got company when it comes to premium materials, and now the great build quality isn't really a unique feature anymore, uh, as good as it still might be. Uh, the M9 is evolutionary at best, design-wise from the M8, which again, at best, was evolutionary from the M7. The three generation of phones in almost 36 months in the design language hasn't changed much. I get it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of mentality, but I assume HTC wants people to upgrade from the M8. Just looking at the two side by side, I'm hard pressed to really see a reason why. We've come to accept phones looking the same for two generations. Think of it as the iPhone, iPhone S model. But after three years, it was time for something fresh. We just don't have that here at the M9. So this is a phone after all, which means you're going to spend all your time with it looking at that screen, that 1080p screen. I don't wave the QHD flag so much, but it's noticeable emission here too. 12 months from now, QHD is going to be commonplace and apps and games will be designed to use it and the M9 won't be able to deliver the same visual experience as other phones purchased at the exact same time. So having knocked it for resolution, it does have excellent outdoor visibility, great viewing angles, and overall looks pretty good, but it's far from the best 1080p screen out there. 
Also flaking the screen are black bars needed to add room for boom sound speakers. They are an eyesore on an otherwise really nice looking phone. The decision to include a 5 inch 1080p screen was supposedly made to deliver killer battery life performance from its 2840 milliamp hour pack, which it doesn't really do. There are two schools of thought when it comes down to battery tests. Real life usage and drain tests. We ran both. Uh, with the battery fully charged, brightness at 100% and volume turns all the way down, we're able to stream 1080p YouTube videos for a little over four hours. So in real world, just normal person usage for me, I was able to get home at night, plug it in before I went to bed, 45% battery life left. Speaking of plugging it in, don't expect to just drop this thing on a wireless charging pad. It'll be as useful to the M9 as a bicycle is to a fish. So my usage for me, generally I kick it off the charger around 7 a.m., connect it to Wi-Fi at home in the office, about two hours of phone calls, a decent amount of social media, some video watching, light gaming going on, two email accounts being pulled down and checked every five minutes. Uh, and again, always connected to Wi-Fi and then when I'm out and about uh, using the AT&T network, which is only HSPA Plus on our testing device. So 45% left in the day I get sounds good, but my daily driver before I started testing this was the Nexus 6. That's got almost an inch bigger display, QHD resolution, and with the same usage, had 35% battery life in the end of the day. Ask yourself if that 10% savings is worth it for you. For me, it's not. I'd rather have the bigger screen and QHD. The M8 introduced a much hyped ultrapixel camera that to be kind, let's just say it didn't sit that well with all fans. Uh, this time though, ultrapixels are saved for the front selfie camera. Now you've got a 20 megapixel sensor uh, on the back that can also shoot 4K video. We have a ton of gallery shots over at the written article. So again, hit the link down below if you want to see those in full res. Uh, on paper, it's a pretty awesome sensor coupled with a dual LED flash. However, it's not in the like part of the video. So you probably guess where I'm going with this. There was noise in the images, even in really ideal lighting conditions. There's a lack of detail that becomes super evident when you zoom in as well. Low light wasn't great either, and it wasn't helped by the lack of OIS on the camera. Some pictures came out warm and some came out uneven. It was just really couldn't tell what you're gonna get from the camera. But on the other side, the shutter was really fast. 80 HTC made the settings really customizable. The UI is clean, clear, and also easy to understand. If all you want is a Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, etc. kind of camera, it's gonna be a fine choice for you. If you want more, you're gonna be disappointed though. So there's a lot to like about the HTC M9, and there's a lot that just left me scratching my head. Uh, on one hand, you have an incredibly well-built and well-spec phone that has an outdated screen. I found myself balancing out my likes and their dislike though throughout the entire review. Don't get me wrong, this is a good phone, even a very good phone, but it's not the best phone out there right now, or even the best one that got announced in Mobile World Congress, uh, which makes me really nervous if I was considering using this for up to two years. If you have an M8, I cannot see a killer reason why you should upgrade to this one. Get this phone if you love HTC and you want a modern phone that's built like a tank. Consider all of your options though if you want a device that can offer a compelling, relatively future-proof set of features. For me though, I don't think I'd ask the HTC M9 out on a second date, but maybe you will and who knows, people even hit it off. The HTC One M9 gets a 7 on the Techno Buffalo scale. So what do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree? Is the M9 the phone for you? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Please leave your comments down below. Give the video a thumbs up for new flagship phone reviews. I always appreciate it. Until next time, I'm John Renger from Techno Buffalo. Hit the big subscribe button if you want the latest tech videos as they come to you, usually about once a day. Until then, see you guys next video. Bye-bye.